Intrusive thoughts and behaviours often fit into subcategories. These categories show how common certain intrusive thoughts are and how often compulsions are used as an attempt to rid these thoughts. It makes us feel less alone and more human. But learning the sneaky ways OCD can affect us can be tricky. We can only experience life through our own consciousness and with no way to compare our direct experience to other people's, how do we decipher what is rational thinking and what isn't? especially if these behaviours have been there since childhood. We see people get down on their knees and put their hands together to help change life's course, and we're told that's normal. So why would certain behaviours in OCD be seen differently? Some thoughts and compulsions are harder to categorise. Let's look at one example. Someone's intrusive thoughts affects life in time periods. An example being, if an intrusive thought occurs as the alarm goes off at 8.30am, that person may feel the need to wait till 8.35 before getting out of bed. They need to get out of bed on a positive thought. This worsens, and the start of every hour must be on a good thought. If a bad thought occurs as the hand strikes 12, everything that person plans to do must be delayed by an hour. This gets worse again. And now the moment the clock strikes midnight, a positive thought must be forced into the foreground. If not, the whole day is seen as a write-off, and only by waiting for midnight again does that person get the chance to make amends. If they manage to make the first thought on the day a good one, all is normal. If not, this cycle of hell starts again. I use this example here because this was the very compulsion that affected me for a number of years. It got to the point that New Year's Eve was a very problematic period. I vividly remember that on New Year's Eve in 2005, I failed to have a good thought. And because I had New Year's Eve as the milestone period to obsess over, the only way I could rectify my mistake was to wait until New Year's Eve 2006. Midnight the next day wasn't enough. It didn't have the same weight as New Year's Eve. The way to reverse the problem was to make amends on a night with equal importance. Now, does this simply sit in the category of intrusive thoughts? It seems much more than that. Is it considered emotional contamination? A lesser known subtype of OCD, in which the sufferer fears that contact with a particular person, place or item will somehow contaminate and endanger them. It doesn't fit this description either. Similarly, mental contamination, or the experience of dirtiness in the absence of contact with a pollutant, is often triggered by thoughts, memories or images. This, and other descriptions of mental contamination, often involve washing hands and feeling unhygienic via thoughts. This isn't it either. It is further proof that OCD is so hard to treat, when personal experiences cannot be pinned to a certain term, nor can similar experiences or behaviours be found online. This doesn't mean that these behaviours are normal and cannot be treated. The most we can do is try to separate OCD from normal behaviours, slowly taking back control.